Hello, 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 and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to share with you today a good friend and rock star, uh, Ozzy, the uh, Australia's dating coach. Uh, some people call him. <laughs> thank <laughs> you, brother. Rosenfeld. <laughs> it's great to be here. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'm so happy to have you, buddy. Uh, Very, yeah. You came on my channel very recently. So it's awesome to be here and meet some of your beautiful women who are on your channel, your viewers. Yes, I know they're they're going to be excited that they're going to be excited to hear from you because I know right now with coronavirus and this pandemic and social distancing, texting is more important than ever. I did a live on my channel recently on this subject and it got uh, a great response, a ton of questions, hundreds and hundreds of comments. So uh, you have a ton of incredible value to add on this subject. So we're gonna really share some texting strategies, right? Why don't you share a little bit about what we're gonna be unpacking on yeah. this uh, live today? Yeah, awesome, awesome. I saw some of that live. You did a wonderful job. You covered heaps and heaps of stuff. So we're gonna make sure that we don't repeat anything from that. Reinforce, give some practical stuff for you today. I'm gonna to show you the three commandments that I use and, and basically try to keep things pretty simple for you. Keeping this real simple, we're going to go through the three commandments of text that I teach to my clients. We'll look at some emojis, some good and some of the bad. We'll look at some of the text you want to avoid. And the reality with text is it's really not a lot what you do right. It's what you do wrong that matters most. And it only takes an, an off texting stream to really throw an interaction into the dirt where you know, I always say you're never going to get the guy with text, but you can very easily lose him with text. So you want to make sure you're not mm -hmm. making any of those mistakes. Exactly. Uh, and then to finish, I'll show you some conversation starters, some practical examples, and some of my favorite texts to receive that women have sent me over the years. Uh, I'll give a few examples. Amazing. Stuff Man, that, that, dude, that sounds amazing. Are you ladies excited? Give us a one if you're excited about this. Hey, I know I am. Oh, there's comments. I've, oh, the comments. I didn't even see yeah. the comments. Oh, yeah. They're coming hey. in. We got Brenda, Vicky, Laura, N.A., Diane, Sally. Say hi, y'all. Let us know where yeah. you're watching from. Brenda, and please Laura, let us know your questions. Vicky. Okay. So <laughs> you're definitely going to want to stay till the end on this one because uh, Mark's, like you said, he's going to be giving you those things not to text. And it's much easier to lose a, te lose a guy over text than it is to get him right so we're going to be covering those mm -hmm. no-go texts those no fly zone texts towards the end and he's going to give a lot of practical examples so hang with us and uh, be sure to be uh adding your questions in the comments section whether you're watching live or watching on the replay i will be bringing those up and we'll be answering those throughout the live but also more towards the end so all the more reason to hang out hang out with us for a little while we know you you don't got anything better to do right now i know you don't <laughs> you're in quarantine we know it Saturday no afternoon in quarantine. Come on. like <laughs> This is cool. Heidi's online. Yasmin's here. Hey, Yasmin from Missouri. Hey, Sally. Dora's here. Kathy's here. Uh, we've got, who else is online? Siesta. LA Bailey's here. Very cool. Very Love cool. It. So shall we dive straight in? Let's Matt? dive straight in, my friend. Let's dive straight in. Uh, so where do you want to start, brother? Let's do it. We'll, we'll start with the three commandments that mm -hmm. I teach. So I share these in Messaging Magic, and you'll actually be able to download a free texting guide at the end of this video. It's links in the description. Matt's going to sort that all out, which has some examples. So the three commandments, and, and if you keep texting real simple and just follow these three, they're really good checks to make sure you're doing everything right. The three commandments are this. Text should be, number one, they should be chill. <laughs> chill means... You're not having your serious conversations. You're not having your heavy stuff happen over text. Um, Don't I can probably think of, ugh, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, serious conversations. I'm sure there's been maybe one or two with my partner, you know, over years, over mm -hmm. time. You really want to keep texting chill. If I can read, remember men, we, we get, as much as you hate us for it, we get weighed down by emotional processing. And so if we're emotionally processing text, we feel we're, we're always going to feel kind of like we're losing to you, honestly, if yeah. a big, heavy, like back and forth starts over text. And what do, what do we know about men who are losing? We yeah. hate it. Oh, we yeah. Hate we, we, we don't hate, like to lose. We hate losing everything. And we just hate feeling incompetent in general. So mm. text should be chilled out. Uh, if you have something that you need to say, awesome. Bring it up in the most authentic way. 
which is either a phone and maybe a voicemail at least. Uh, ideally in person these days, it's maybe more of a video call, obviously if it's not a partner or a guy you're dating long term. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so I love that. I love what you're saying there. And so it sounds like what you're saying is that it's not it's not wrong for them. They can they can bring up, you know, that they have something to talk about. Like they can allude to a heavy subject that they want to address during text, but then use text more as a as a tool to sort of redirect towards a more connected form of communication, right? Right. Right. I always think of text as text is essential. It's kind of like the password to your phone. Like you need it to kind of get in and get started. But if you just have that, right, and there's nothing else in the rest of the phone, what, what's the point of your phone? So exactly. text is like a gateway. You need yeah. it. It's important. And, it, and yeah, it can certainly be used to set frames like, hey, there's something I've been wanting to discuss with you. Let me know when you're free. Let's chat, XX. You know, mm -hmm. Very simple, warm text. Uh, but it still says, okay, there's, there's going to be something coming up. So hey. we're just not spilling it. We're not di we're not diving into it over text messages because I mean I can say as a as a man right and I'm sure Mark you know you know this feeling right when you get that Gettysburg address oh that my massive gosh. text that includes like 25 feelings in it and you're like oh my god I don't even know like where to go with this you just want to run away <laughs> we can't process we we just can't and if we are at least hearing it in person it shows that that you've got. The confidence to say it and to say to us and then we say it back um obviously sometimes when you have these conversations in person you know you'll give the guy space to process them but if you're hiding behind a text wall it's it's and if if we did it it'd be exactly the same thing you know it's not it's not good from either angle it, exactly love it man love it what's next uh, Laura says, Matt, what's your favorite song right now? <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, the last song that I'll, then I'll just, I'll just, I'm just going to shotgun answer that one real quick. <laughs> I was walking out into my kitchen a couple months ago, uh, when I was still at home in, in Florida and it was Saturday night live and Billie Eilish, uh, playing that song. Like, I love you. He, she was performing it live. I love you Bill by Billie Eilish. She was doing it live on SNL. I broke into tears standing in my kitchen. I was like, this is such uh, a song. That song just boom, like just annihilated me. So I love that. I love favorite. that. What about yours? What's yours? I'm going to go with Armin Van Buren's Something Real. Ooh. Okay, you EDM fans, you know you're with me. Look at, dude, uh, I'm a huge I'm, uh, dude. I need a I need a glow stick, man. Where's I love him. I love him. <laughs> uh, we got some texting questions too. So, uh, a couple around sex and how does a woman stay away from sexually charged text? Was oddly, Junie said how. Yeah, let's go uh, with Junie. Let's start with Junie's Junie. here. Yeah, it's a good one. So often I receive sexual texts from guys who I'm either not in a relationship with uh, or a guy that I'm dating. What is the best response? Hmm. So Junie, a big part of what you do when, when you receive this from guys you don't want is it's just an easy filter, right? If the guys, when you're dating a good guy, it should feel like a friend, like a respectful hmm. friend right? And then you add some polarity in and some attraction in as well. A guy should be able to like, get it. Like, like just, just get it. Like the right guy's yeah. going to be like, oh, it's probably not appropriate to send her a sexual text right now. Cause like, I'm getting to know this person. So if the guy doesn't get that, it, it's really actually super simple. It just means he's not the guy. So I don't know. Don't reply. Probably maybe just like un unmatch him or or if you really like him and maybe you've been dating a little while and mm -hmm. like he has been super good and he just tries to go there, um, you can be like, ha ha, like nice try. That isn't happening right now. And yeah. like give him the socially intelligent hint. And if he's up to it, the socially intelligent guy should get that and be like, okay, I, I pushed the line too far. Yeah. You agree I, I, I agree a hundred percent. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to use the uh the the anchorman meme of like well that escalated quickly like and like have like will ferrell just be sitting there with like a glass of scotch and just use like a funny meme and then like let him know in a playful way that that's a little too far 
right and yeah. and then just and then just pull back or send him the meme and then cut him off if it's a guy that you're just like ready to be not, done with not into know? it at all <laughs> champion by carrie underwood says laura yeah uh, that's her favorite that's her that's her that's her <laughs> recent favorite song yeah put y'all put y'all's recent favorite song in the comments why not let's go yeah put it all are there any other <laughs> fans in the house what if you're an armed fan i want to hear from you i love it uh carol carol says how do you stay away from oh i can read on the screen how do you say how do you how do you stay away from me i assume you mean men that i that say i love you in the first couple of hours dear god it makes me want to run in the other direction good that's yeah. a healthy response run in the other direction <laughs> Head for the hills, sweetheart. That guy's definitely, there's no, nothing good about that. <laughs> got a, a metalhead in the house, Sophie. Nice. Jackie's online too. All right. Amazing, y'all. So, Kia, keep putting your questions around texting. We're looking for, and, and in the comments on this as well, if you're watching on the replay, we're talking about how to text a man during social distancing, during a pandemic, and also just all the time. Because texting just is general. now, it is a fundamental dimension of being in relationship with men so uh we're gonna we're going through the three pillars the three pillars of texting a man in in a magnetic powerful way the first one keep it chill right keep don't chill. be serious <laughs> keep, you can you can allude as matt says to a serious conversation like hey can we chat about something let me know when you've got some time xx uh but you don't have the pour out conversation over text uh Amen. chill second one is chatty it mm. should be chatty it should be like you're texting a friend, like a cool friend. You, mm. if, if you're going back and forth, and again, we're going to talk about some of the mistakes, which is overusing text, but certainly when you're dating someone, there will be days where you just go back and forth. It should sound like a conversation. Mm. Um, well, I learned this from my ex, actually, whom I did a video about. We we weren't compatible. It was a pretty hard breakup and a great lesson for me to learn. Mm -hmm. um, but she had this amazing ability to text exactly how she spoke. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you were whenever you were texting her, and I noticed this because other men would love it when she texted her guy friends, um, she would have this ability to convey her personality exactly the way she spoke through text message. Mm. it's very informal and it's it's chatty there's there's no bluntness to it doesn't look like a letter or formal responses mm. remember uh, matt and i talked about this in a live stream recently is men are very experiential so if you can have your text sound like you are in conversation with him then that's a really powerful thing because he's getting the experience. He's like, oh, I can't wait to hear her voice again. I can't wait to talk to her again. You want to go from information on a screen to personality portrayed on a screen as much as possible. And by having a chatty demeanor when you do it, like a, a fun, like, again, like you'd have with a friend, you're, you're chatty, you're using the words that you'd actually say, mm. right? You're, you're speaking the way you would say it. And that's going to be whatever it is for you. But think of you when you're fun, when you're light, when you're chill, how you talk to a friend, mm -hmm. that should be coming across over text. I, I love it, man. Yeah, well, it's keeping that authentic dialogue going, right? I mean, text can be a great way to maintain an, a, a connection if you're willing to be authentic with them, right? And I think there's a, there's a and let us know, ladies, if you agree with this, there can be a, a tendency to sort of change the dynamic when we're texting, like we want to impress them more. We want to throw in more stuff that we feel this need to sort of earn the right to, to be loved or to get validated by the guy that we're texting with. Don't start trying harder in communication over text message, like stay in alignment with who you were on dates because Mark, right? Well, that, it kind of throws you off when like you meet a girl and she's super chill and mellow and text or like, you know, in person, and then you start texting with her and she's like, completely different oh, you're like okay so who's the real thing the real person <laughs> i i have a, a a friend who does this and she's super relaxed in person and then gets serious and weird over text it's the it's the weirdest thing and i was just like this is why i could never ever date her because there's total inconsistency between her in person where she's pretty chill and relaxed and then like these serious stuff comes up over text 
Uh, I think it's probably my intuition realizing that she's burying stuff and it's not all that healthy. Mm. Uh, but whatever it is, I definitely don't want to date her when I see that, right? Or when I feel that, I should say. Yeah. Um, so there should be that consistency there. Like, when it, how, am I, how am I when I'm my most relaxed, most chatty? And how does that come across in my messages? Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Awesome. What's 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 number three? Numero numero trace here. I got chill, chatty, and cheerful. Cheerful, chill, chatty, and ah. cheerful. Cheerful, pretty much simple as it sounds. Is in text you got to lean towards keeping up the positive vibes. Mm. Um, and the reason is because when you have your natural neg and negative vibes are natural, right? But when you have them in person, um, people get more of a sense for you. It's it's more transient mm. and you can talk about it as it goes on. You know, if like my partner's feeling a bit negative, um, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it and we'll have a chat about it. Right. Or mm. she'll just kind of express it. And I'm just like, okay, she's in that state. You know, there's a more dynamic flow. Whereas when you express negativity over text, it just sits there for hours stewing. Yeah. It's just like, here's the negativity source sitting here stewing. And especially if, if you don't reply, uh, it just it just sits there, right? It, affecting mm -hmm. the guy. And remember, whatever the, the thing with text is, and sometimes if sometimes when you send a text, you you want to make an impression, so you do leave it. Whatever was the text before gets washed away pretty quickly. People don't remember what text you texted four texts ago, right? Yeah. So whatever is sitting on the screen tends to make a disproportionately large impression. So you don't want negative vibes just sitting on the screen in general. Mm -hmm. Right. By all means, express them 100%, especially if you're having a down day. That's something you share with a friend. But do it over the phone. Do it over tech. Uh, sorry, do it over voicemail. Um, and if you do like have a down day where you're really just like, oh, this is not, I'm not myself today, you know, send something like, oh, look, if he asks how your day is, send something like, look, not going to lie, I had a rough day, trying to learn from it. Um, going to do some yoga to make myself feel better. You know, something like put an empowering spin on it so that mm. you can leave that. And then he's like, yeah, cool. We all have down days, but she's taking care of it. It's not my job to make her happy, especially over text. Oh, uh, that's such a heavy, that's such a heavy burden, right? And men do have this fundamental reflexive. If we see a woman, you know, who's not doing well, especially if we care about her or whatever, our, our, our impulse is to try to fix. Right. Yeah. So like, but don't, you don't want to put that on him like involuntarily or oh, yeah. over text or, or, or over. Yeah. And then, and then have him start trying to do it over text message. Cause he doesn't want to call you cause he doesn't want to be too forward. And maybe you don't want to talk about it. And it just starts throwing a bunch of gnarly, like complicated communication dynamics into the, yeah, I, it's, and blame us for being guys. We just have this stupid thing where we want to fix negative problems with you. We want to be mm -hmm. princes and it's, it's sometimes it's ridiculous. Um, but a lot of guys have it. And if the negativity is left on the screen and he's trying to like fix you up with text and then you're not feeling better and he feels inadequate because he can't fix you, fix you straight away. Right. It's just not a good path to go down. No, amen, amen to that. I completely agree. hundred percent. Ladies, let us know in the comments. What do you think about this? You know, have you, have you seen these work in the past, right? Being it was, uh, what, what were the three again? Re recap the three of them. Chill, chatty, and cheerful. Chill, chatty, and cheerful. Poetry, poetry. We got, that's, I love it, man. I love it. And we got a question here from Art C here. This sure. is a, this is a, a, a big one. Uh, I texted him, are things okay with us? He said, I don't know. I have a lot on my plate right now, trying to figure stuff out with my kids. And he said, I don't think it's a good time to start a relationship. What can I text? What do you think, Mr. Rosenfeld? What do you think about that? Okay. So we look at chill, chatty, and cheerful, and we can see that this isn't really chill and it's not super cheerful. Okay. Then this is the problem with going into heavy stuff over text is you get a response like this. And you're like, oh, well, okay, what, what, what can I do with this? You know, there's, there's no, it, you can't take emotional roads down a non-emotional medium. There, there's, it leaves you in the corner here. Uh, what I would do right now is he's basically giving you a, a big indicator of disinterest there. 
So I would be saying, okay, well, I'm going to leave this. Um, I'm going to go do my own thing for a while. I'm going to get to a point where I'm feeling really good within myself. Give him maybe a week just to let that sit, let him feel the loss of you. Mm. And while you're doing that, brightening yourself up. And when you come back to this, avoid texting. It's a texting video, but avoid texting for stuff like this because it's almost the other problem with texting like this is that once it's been said now, it's like the guy has, once we've said something, we tend to want to stick by what we've said. Mm-hmm. So if you bring this conversation up over text and it doesn't go your way, now he's now he's communicated it, right? As opposed to if he hadn't have sent this text, he'd be more open to changing his mind. So you really want to make sure for all, all you're watching, don't have these conversations over text because if they don't go your way, they're then even harder to resolve later on. There's, there's honestly no text that I can think of that, that can resolve this. I'd only go towards, okay, how do I finish with... The only text I would possibly suggest is something that finishes with a really chill, chatty, cheerful vibe so that you can reset the whole situation and start again in two weeks. Yeah. So maybe something like, uh, he said, I don't think it's a good time to start a relationship. Um, something like, t- uh, totally get that. Um, really appreciate you and, and you know, the thing we did together. Totally get that. Really appreciate you and heading out to that thing together. It's been super fun. Mm-hmm. XX. And just kind of leave him sit with that so he feels the loss. And then you can come back in two weeks and start the whole thing over without the seriousness over text. I'll yeah, see. I- Exactly. I totally agree, my friend. Totally agree. I'm on board. I can't add anything to that. Hit the reset button, give it some space to breathe and see, you know, if he comes back after he feels the space, the gap of you, or, you know, you can always ping him two weeks from now once sort of the dust settles, if you are still interested in having a uh, relationship with him. I love that. Thank you, Artsy. Appreciate you sharing. Yeah, that was great. Thanks. Yeah. And feel free to get vulnerable. Y'all get real. Like we want to give real advice to real stuff coming up. Jennifer says, uh, love your advice. I find yeah. it so easy for everything heavy. It, it, that's the thing. Because oh. his text doesn't give you tone. It doesn't nah. give you context. Text is just information flying through a vacuum. And you end up projecting and attaching all of your stuff to it almost involuntarily. Right? So like one short text from a woman I'm dating. And even me, like with all the work I've done on myself, I'm like, oh, my God. I, I, I blew it. Right. Or like, I'll have those, especially in the, early, isn't it most prevalent Mark in the early stages when you don't really yeah. know that other person yet? <laughs> Cause you don't have the foundation. Um, if you both know each other are cool and normal and, and that's all good. And you've had plenty of dates together. The, the texting gaffes can get covered by the, okay, I, I must be misinterpreting what him or her said, but when you don't have that information, you go straight to the assumption that while I'm not misinterpreting what's on the screen is, is true. And it, we'll, we'll talk about what not to do in a minute, but if it comes out passive aggressive, if it comes out blunt, if it comes out overly emotional, uh, it's not good. It's, it's not exactly, exactly. So tread lightly, especially in the early stages of dating. And I talked about this on my live the other day, texting is a tool in the early stages of dating. You flirt, you plan a date, and really that's about it. it you know you don't you don't go into extensive dialogues in the early stages of dating it's building attraction and polarity in a light way and planning the logistics of the next date that's all you want to use it for or else you start yeah. going down the rabbit hole of uh, a bunch of stuff yeah think of it like little drips of your personality that just kind of bridge the gaps between when you really get to show it yeah i love that i love that so so far we got the three Pillars of testing. Three key pillars. Uh, we'll talk some emojis in a moment. Matt, I would yeah. love to hear, chill, chatty, and cheerful. Matt, I'd love to hear, what are your, or what's one of your favorite emojis? Of all, oh, of all the emojis. Maybe sent. Yeah, and ladies, please put in the comments, put your favorite emojis. Let's talk emojis. I love that. Okay, so my uh, my favorite is definitely the the hug, the hug one with the two little hands. Oh, nice. That's, nice. that's one that I use all the dang time. I feel like it just gives you a, uh, a really, it's just really warm. It sort of implies a sort of openness. It's like an invitation, but mm. that's one I use a lot, both when I'm dating somebody and then just in my everyday life, it's very versatile, right? It serves a lot of different, uh, 
a lot of different yeah functions, but that's I'm interesting because a... I, I never use that one that's it, that's cool nah yeah no well it's good it shows us there's different approaches to this as well mm -hmm. yeah well so what's what's one of yours i mean i use a ton i'm an emoji ninja so but like you know i'll Oh, uh, what's what's one of yours? What's one of some yours? of the? Oh, we got some emojis coming through. Uh, we I love these that are coming through. These are these are my some of these are a lot of these are my gig actually. So some of my favorites. You got to think. All right, what's what's the experience? You know, what's my best kind of emoji to convey my personality and drip my personality through? Mm. Uh, crying, laughing. I think you, you can hardly go wrong with crying, laughing. Yeah. Anytime you, anytime you. Uh, just a, having fun anytime you bring up an inside joke, crying, laughing. I've even seen crying, laughing, completely disarm. I talk about this in the in the texting guide. You can download free and in messaging magic, you can actually take a text. I think there's an example that I use where crying, laughing makes a huge. Oh, I use the example. Uh, I was checking through my feed this morning and started thinking about our cat conversation. Hmm. If you think about that text with or without a couple of crying laughing emojis on the end, it completely changes the meaning, right? Totally. I was thinking, thinking this morning about our, what, did, what was it? I was checking my feed this morning and thinking about our cat conversation mm. versus I was checking my feed this morning and thinking about our cat conversation. A few crying laughing emojis, you know, this is inside joke. You know, this is something hilarious that's going on uh, versus quite a factual statement. It completely shifts the meaning. It does. So, Crying laughing is a big one that I love. I, I'm a big fan of the blush emoji. And mm. the reason is that it, com it communicates a, because it tilts up, it communicates a little bit of, a little bit of confidence bordering on arrogance. Uh -huh. And this is one that it, not so much that I use, but I've had a lot of ladies use on me, mm. which it's kind of like, oh, this is why you're lucky to have me. And uh -huh. they use it for that sort of tone, which is the, the high value attractive tone. Yeah, really, really powerful one. The blush. I'm just what? Uh, what was the example? I had a couple of examples of different ones here. Uh, blush, 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 blush. No, I can't remember what I did with it. No, is it here? Blush emoji is a big one. That's uh, a kiss emoji. Lots of you have been floating kiss emojis. That is a. I really like kiss emoji. It adds extra warmth. It does. Uh, the other thing that I'll sometimes do to substitute this in, which I've had a lot of positive feedback on is I end every single text I ever send with an X. Mm. Um, and it softens even even quite harsh text. I, and I'm, I text this to men. I text this to women. I text what does that mean? What does it mean? It was us, in, in America, we don't... I, maybe is that an Aussie thing? Is Because I, I think of that as a kiss. X yeah. is like a kiss. Yeah, it kind of is. Interesting. So you're just kissing everybody out there. I'm kissing everyone. Because I always say, if, if I'm going to be misinterpreted, what would I, which way would I rather be misinterpreted? Hot really? or cold? I'd much rather be slightly misinterpreted warm and fix that later than be slightly misinterpreted cold and fix that mm. later. Uh, so yeah. I, will, I will text that to everyone, all my texts. And it's funny because um, when, you're, when you're dating, people often overthink it at the start. Because mm -hmm. your first text, you, you t I, I end my emails with that. Um, it's just a habit that I've had for a long time. Mm. And it actually gets people, it's funny, a little side effect is when you're dating, people overthink it a little bit. Totally. And then they, they're like, he's already sending me exes. Oh, he's so obsessive. What's going on here? But then there's the, the back end, which is they don't get a needy sense. So there's this kind mm. of curiosity that's built. And then they're like, oh, he just does that to everyone. And it actually creates a little bit of jealousy because I'm like, oh, oh that fucker just does it to everyone. <laughs> so, and, and again, that was something I learned from, from an ex of mine who put XOX on every text, every single text she ever sent. And mm. I noticed the warmth that would come through and kind of the love that would come through in her texts. And I thought, that's really, really cool. Um, she just has really good text conversations with everyone. Yeah, and still, still to this day, it's, it's something she does. So that's a personal little thing that I've learned. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, I, I love it, man. I love it. And we got so many, so many people got are some blush that emojis. I love this. Yeah, the heart emoji yeah. is a good one. I use heart a lot. I use the heart one. That's probably number two. It's like hug, then heart, and then gosh, what would the third? What was probably the crying face? 
would probably be the, those are probably my top three. I would yep. say that I use all the damn time. Hearts are the socially intelligent replacement for thumbs up. Hmm. Yeah. Thumbs up is slightly sarcastic. Yeah, the thumbs up. I don't ever use the thumbs up, and, and I don't think not, not not many people do these days. I think that one's sort uh, of fallen out of fallen out of favor. It's, it's taken on a sarcastic tone, so you got to be real yeah. careful with it in flirting. It's kind of got a hmm tone where I can't be fucked replying. I I have to agree with you, or I want to agree with you, but I'm too lazy to reply. It's taken on that tone for some reason, so, so I would avoid the thumbs up. Yeah. What about what about SF's question? This is fun. Uh, how how can we get how can we do a little sexy flirty emoji give the give the green light for some quarantine <laughs> romance here to, to SF? I love it. It it obviously depends a little bit where you are in the relationship. So have you guys slept together or not? You know, is a little bit different. Are you guys just starting to go down that path, or is it you've slept together a couple of times and you are a little bit more established? Because that will determine how. It sounds Obviously, like it's it sounds like it's pre it. pre anything. It sounds like she's got a crush on the dude and they know each other. They're in <laughs> she has a crush on him. So uh so you wouldn't want to go like slanty face eggplant emoji. You wouldn't want to go there. Like it's a little early. No, <laughs> it's a bit heavy. <laughs> slanty face is fun, but it takes you down a sexual path. It's very it's the most sexual emoji by far other than the eggplant emoji it's other than the eggplant yeah. and the water emoji <laughs> <The> water <emoji. laughs> okay so how do we how do we green light uh over text to a guy that she's maybe got a crush on and again more obviously it would be good to know more about like what's the stage of their relationship right are they friends are they flirtatious already because you don't want to like over push right if they haven't like set that precedent you know but right. Right. You, you've, you've got to figure out a way to get him on a call or on a video call. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you can do is... So they've, we've kissed. Kissed they've kissed. They've kissed. There's um, okay. So it's not totally out of the blue. Yeah. One thing you can do is, and this is more of a, a general tip, but just in general, and it might be a little weird to do it out of nowhere in the situation, so you might have to say that you're doing it, is switch to voicemail. And by switching to voicemail, what you do is you just kick in the guy's estrogen detector brain. And I've had clients do this. They say, oh, it's weird for me to switch in the midst of it. And I'll say, just say you're doing it. Just mm -hmm. literally say, hey, I'm switching to voicemail with most of my friends so that I can like form better connections with people. Like and then, voice, like, well, You mean like voice text? Voicemail. Oh. Like WhatsApp voicemail. Um, uh or yeah, messenger voice messenger has a function. Instagram has a function. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's one option just in general. If you want to get more in a guy's head, just switch to voicemail in general. And, and you'll find that he'll sometimes text instead of voicemail and that's fine. But more you switch to voicemail, the more he's like here in your voice and it just shows more confidence. It's faster. You can say more in less time. It's It's a really winning move that a lot of my guy friends have been doing it and the ladies love it because they hear the dude's voice and they're like, oh, this is cool. I get to listen to him. Totally. Uh, so there's that. As for what you're actually putting in the message, all you need is something that hints it forward, which is you're having a conversation. I'm assuming you guys are texting back and forth. Um, hey, you'll have to tell me more about this. Like, let me know when you're free one night this week and, we'll, uh, and, and I'll let you know when I'm free. Let me know when you're free one night this week and let's chat and put a blush emoji on it. You know, the little... Let's chat. Yeah, Keep it real exactly. Simple. Yeah, give him a green light to step it up to the call level, and you'll see pretty quickly how invested he is. Exactly. I think yeah, I think that's a great, a great, a great way to go. You know, like get him on a call. Once you get him on a call or in some sort of casual situation, you'll be able to gauge and evaluate his interest, right? I wouldn't go with Tilly's Tilly's suggestion. Don't just send him nudes. I mean, it might, <laughs> might get you the result. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly, come on, Tilly. Bad Tilly. <laughs> uh, Tilly's uh Tilly's pretending Tilly's a guy I kept that came here and is pretending to like oh, I'm gonna create a Tilly's email gonna, Tilly's I'm gonna to see oh, it. Yeah. Send dudes. No, Tilly's tried to see it. Yeah, but no, it's SF. Yeah, so so really truly, like honestly, if there is connection, if there is attraction, all you have to do is make an invitation and then give him space and allow him to come forward and fill that space, yeah. right? Like ask him what he's doing this weekend, you know, like 
get him talking about activities and then make it, you know, invite him be like, Oh, wow. So, you know, it doesn't sound like you got a lot going on this weekend. <laughs> Me neither. Wouldn't it be fun if we, you know, whatever, like chatted on the phone or did something or grabbed a coffee or whatever, you can make an invitation for him and then allow him to drive the conversation from there, you know? And, and yeah. I mean, I know my, my last girlfriend, like she basically asked me out for coffee after she found out that I was, out there, you know, dating in, in Sarasota. Right. Yeah. And, it was, and I, I was very appreciative of that because I had dismissed her as a prospect, you know, and like, I'm very grateful that she had the courage to, to take a little initiative. And then I took the ball yeah. from there and ran with it. So, yep. uh, yep. <laughs> you can be subtle about it, but subtle, subtle is obvious. You know, when, when you take something like that, the guy's going to get it. And it subtly communicates, okay, bro, step up, like do something, and then he can decide if he wants to. A hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I love it. All right. So, well, anything else on emojis, my friend? We got so much, uh, so much uh, good emojis. What are some stuff. other faves? What are some other faves? I love the, I love an occasional good use of either the the cowboy, or the cool sunglasses emoji. Oh, sunglasses! Very just, confident. Just they're, they're very, they're very confident. They're very cool. <laughs> Like like a like a should you be so lucky boy with either a cowboy hat or a sunglasses emoji is is cool. That's a really though just any of the cool type emojis. The embarrassed emoji is a treat, which is just the one sweat bead the dripping one down. Sweat bead. I use that one a good bit. Um, I once had a girl text me a screenshot of my own text asking me what I should reply to it. And I sort of read this and I was like, I don't think this was intended for me. Oh, um, and so ah, she, she made she a real text. texting your stuff to somebody else. Yeah, That's she was funny. texting a friend, accidentally sends it to me. But how's this for a recovery? Uh, she said, God, I'm smooth. Texting the guy I'm dating, asking advice on what to text the guy I'm dating. And then put a put a embarrassed um, sweat bead emoji on it and it's totally high value she totally actually won from that situation because i was like oh she owned it and she like it. yeah she did it really well so you That's can really amazing. pull that one out when you get yourself into a spot and it's it's a good recovery emoji that one if, if you just get embarrassed or if you lose or if you say something really silly or yeah if you just do something dumb it's a great one to get a, to get yourself out of trouble it is, um, yeah. And yeah the sly emoji i think the sly emoji is the most subtle of the sexual emojis I yeah. avoid wink emoji yeah. unless you really want to go down the line, but the sly emoji still gives you deniability. It, it, it's it's a sly one. You mean like the sideways, like the sideways? Yeah, yeah, where he's like, yeah. yeah, we can bring it up. Someone, uh, someone, give me a sly emoji in the chat. Yeah, purple, we purple know. horned emoji. That's one you're going all the way down into uh, <laughs> into naughty oh, land. Okay. The other one is, is um the 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 monkey with the hands over his mouth. That's a cute one. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Um, that's a good one to use when you're just being a bit cheeky or when you've, yeah, when you want to communicate like you've done something a little bit dodgy in a playful way and you've just, you're like, I didn't say that. I didn't know. I didn't do that. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the sly emojis coming in the house. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, there there you go. Save me. Hey. You know, I'll, be, I'll be honest, man. I find the sly face emoji more sexual than the winky face in my own in my own like when a woman sends a sly face emoji i kind of like she's like that emoji is only thinking about sex there's almost no chance that that emoji is thinking about anything other than sex yeah i i i've always got a more <laughs> confident vibe from the sly emoji than the wink the wink ah. is a little old school and the wink is a little it's 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 a little five years ago that's true. Yeah, that's that's true. It's totally. It is a little outdated. Yeah, everybody was winking five years ago. But it's it's a little outdated. I, I I don't mind the sly if done right. But if you want a confident emoji that's not so sexual, the the glasses, the cowboy, I've had used on me pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I I completely agree. Well, I was, I, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> what is this, Jackie? Jackie. <laughs> the other one, which I at a loss for words. At a loss for words. Yeah, I was the other uh, one that you can make fun of a guy with is one of my favorites is the neutral emoji, which mm. is just when he says something stupid. A good way to make fun of him is just the straight up neutral emoji. Yeah, like, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like the cricket sound is what it's communicating. Failure. Like you're ridiculous. Failure uh, to launch. Exactly. I love a good neutral emoji. <laughs> yes, Sophie's got it. Sophie. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, the one. Good neutral yeah. emoji. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that's probably enough on emojis. We've got a mm. question here. Do we in person? Ashley's question. You want to bring that one up? Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, yeah. So, all, all, so at, great consistent interactions in person, but texting has always been very basic. A few simple texts a day. Except that texting isn't a big factor in our dating relationship. Or is this a flag? Thoughts? I, I'd, I'd move more? to voicemail. Move to voice mm -hmm. notes and then see if anything changes. Mm. Yeah, just try to like create a new level of intimacy in text because some people aren't writers, right? Some yeah. people just some guys are super blunt and just frankly useless with text. Yeah. But if he can talk, then move him to a medium that suits him. Exactly. I'm with you. I'm with you on that, Mark. Yeah, I think that, you know, some men just have issues with texting. Some men don't like to write. Some men are very un un not useful, but everybody is used to talking. So transition into into voice notes, voice memos, and see see how it goes. Yeah, no flag. Yeah, Sophie's with us on that. Not necessarily a flag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk a few of the tasting gaffes. So stuff yeah. you want to avoid. Maddie's already mentioned a couple of these. Uh, any essay texts, anything of a saying, keep the charisma, lighten the length. Mm. Right. This is a thing that. Uh, by the way, you can download the free texting guide. There's 12 texts to make them yours. You can, if you want some examples of any of this stuff, Maddie's put a link in the link description. Link in the description. Check it out. Essay texts. Yeah. Anything that, that is, and, and I think Matt discussed this yesterday excellently in his live stream. If there's disproportionate texting from you to him, uh, and just as fairly from him to you, no one likes text essays. They're there's nothing fun about text essays. Uh, and you know what's funny? You can say about this much text in a 10-second voice note. Wow. If you have something that's actually like you want to communicate something decent, put it in a voice note. Mm. Literally, if you look at the number of words that I'm saying right now over the next five to 10 seconds, you'll find that it's a text about that big, but it doesn't look ridiculous because I'm saying it. Yeah. And, and you can hear the emotion and the, the meaning behind the statement, right? Another, yeah. another great value to doing voice memos over doing text messages is that they get the energetic and emotional context of what you're trying to say. And it's much more digestible for them on every level. So there's really, there's no downside to it, you know? This is why I never do personally, I don't do email coaching. Uh, all mm. my coaching is done over voicemail or video call because I don't want to be reading paragraphs and deciphering and it's so clunky and slow. Yeah. Uh, so no, avoid your essay texts is a big one. Uh, avoid anything that's passive aggressive. Mm. Or blunt. Okay. Passive aggressive. So give us an example. Um, of, uh, what you mean by uh, that? I had a, I had a friend once sent me, uh, what's, what's a good example? like, Hey, like lots of, lots of, we hadn't spoken in a while. She said something to the nature of lots of good friends have been calling me. That's what good friends do. I'm just like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> come on girl. Just twist, you know? twist in the knife. Right. Oh, like, Oh my gosh. It's, it's a, that one was a little victimy as well, but it just anything that's, <laughs> Anything that assumes the worst from the situation, if especially if something, if, if the guy has been an ass, right, then mm. you probably want to be dealing with that and getting away from him. At most, bring it up in person, right? But mm. usually early in dating, your actions are leading, not your words. The, the more you get to know someone, the more that person deserves words, right? Obviously, if you're mm. a married couple, you talk everything out, you're not just going to walk away. But in dating... Your actions lead the way. Someone has yeah. to earn words, right? Uh, Absolutely. What was I saying? So you don't, yeah, don't follow that. Yeah. 
passive aggressive. So, so yeah, so don't do so then, you know, and another, another way of, of looking at that is don't text him trying to like with an agenda tr to try to make him feel guilty, to try to make him feel bad about yeah. doing or not doing something. Just don't be inherently manipulative with what you're texting and why you're texting it or not texting him like i had a girl like one time i went on like a great date with her you know she maybe drank a little too much and acted a little you know she was a, a little a little <laughs> drunk a lot drunk like extremely outrageously drunk right but i did not hold it against her in any way the next day i tried to hit the reset button or whatever and i was going out of town that weekend and i asked her you know so you know uh so i had such a great time with you the other night, you know, like, what did you think about our date? And she said, Oh, I was, I I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, Oh yeah. What about? And then she left me on read for three days. Didn't text me. Uh -huh. Didn't, didn't give me an answer to the question for three days. And I was out of town, but I came back and she still hadn't responded. And the question's just hanging there, you know? And I was just like, why haven't, uh, did I do something wrong? So I immediately felt guilty. Like maybe I had done something wrong. And so then I'm like, what, what's what's the deal you know like she's like oh i just knew you were out of town and i'm like bs you knew i was going out of town like that was inherently a manipulative yeah, like yeah that's super weird <laughs> yeah, yeah no. and that was the end of that that was that's the end good. of that right good, so <laughs> good. <laughs> please uh, yeah. So we got, yeah, passive aggressive texts. Another one which we spoke about a little bit earlier is relationship status text. Ooh. Uh, you never want to send anything. Where do you see this going? How do you feel about us? Are you seeing other people? Ah, uh, don't be doing it. Don't, don't be do that it. Girl. Just don't, don't be do that girl. it. No, no relationship status text. Have the confidence. Honestly, the guy will respect you for it. And if you're really unsure where you're at and you want the best chance of it going forward, the best chance of that is if you do not text anything about it and you bring it up. Mm, bring it up in person, bring it up within the context of a safe, you know, conversation, right? Because it's very easy for a man, you know, to feel very pressured and almost attacked by the where is this going? Are you seeing other people like those texts can really come across to a man as as, as very heavy and forceful, right? Which is exactly the opposite of what you want to do really at any point in communication with a man, but particularly uh, over text message with him. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nice. And probably the other one to avoid, obviously anything around just anything. And this kind of talks into what we were talking about there, but anything around overly seriousness conversation, like serious conversation, whether it's, you're considering breaking up, you're considering going away, whether you even like say saying something like I love you, it could be serious good as well. Just keep anything serious yeah. off the text. Keep it chill, chatty, and cheerful. Yeah, exactly. Just if it's if it's a heavy, if you think that there's gonna that he's gonna need to have a big serious response to your statement, don't open that can of worms over text message. Don't initiate that conversation over text and then put him under pressure to have to re respond equivalently to you. It's not, it is not going to work, right? It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not. Oh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Chill, chatty, and cheerful. We spoke about some of the texts that are mistakes. We've talked about some of our favorite emojis. Sophie's put in some of the shocked emojis. That one has its place as well when you're feeling surprised. Yeah. Uh, we'll finish up with a few of a couple of conversation starter texts and a few favorite texts that I've received as mm. well. Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's let's answer a question here as we let's dive into that. First. Yeah, let's, let's answer some questions. Put your questions in the comments, y'all. I'm going to be picking up some questions and answering questions now. We have Izarwa. I've been dating a guy for four months with the lockdown. We're texting daily, video calling and VN. Boy, boy, uh, I don't know what VN is, but uh, but it's not like we're doing many things to catch up on about. Oh yeah, okay. So like you're running out, basically you're running out of things to say <laughs> to, this, to this guy or it feels like it. Uh, you're in the fairly early stages of, of dating is what it sounds like. So let's see. I mean, it's something that comes up for me just to, as I read that question is like, 
reflecting on your on your favorite dates that you've had, favorite experiences that you've shared, and maybe planning and sort of talking about what things you want to do in the aftertimes. Like once, like what are some cool things that we could do? Yeah. You know, we, like, uh, we just started planning a trip in October. We're going to come visit you. Actually, we're going to be in your neck of the woods in September, mm -hmm. October. Really? You coming? You coming over? You gonna come hang out? Yeah, dude. I got a big couch, bro. You and Excellent. your girl can both sleep on the couch. It's Excellent. all yours. Pull out. Oh, yeah, I'm Kane. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> See, and it's fun. So you're planning a trip, right? So planning trips and planning adventures. That's one thing, you know, because don't man enjoy, don't man enjoy that process, Mark. The process of planning and building something with their partner. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, the, the other thing I'd add to this is really your Zawa, your limits here are only your imagination. Uh, lots of people are, are kind of doing a lot of Netflix watching this quarantine, kind of hanging out, doing some stuff, right? That's kind of the default that a lot of people are doing. Mm -hmm. So be the exception. But what could be cool than telling the guy, hey, I read these two awesome audio books this week. I got a new Mark Manson one. Think about this concept. Think about this concept. Uh, did you know like this concept around hope? And then I read this money one, like, oh, I've been really thinking I should set up more accounts and da da da. And then you're like, hmm, do you know what else I could do? I could be like really creative with my exercise. Like I got this new exercise that I'm doing. It's, this is more a question for me around how you are feeling your time. So if you get that right, this question, I think will take care of itself. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Be productive with your time and then share those experiences with him. Ask him powerful questions, right? Make, make your conversations more around a uh, discussion of ideas, sharing ideas, right? Mm. Like, you know, the daily report, like, is that what that question kind of uh, impl communicates to me is that y'all are sort of in the daily report stage of communication where you're just talking about the things that you've done that day. Whereas there's a lot more depth you could go into. Like I could literally talk for three months and I mean, I'm a huge reader, but I also like to watch, you know, ridiculous TV. I could talk about Tiger King for literally weeks. <laughs> I've been hearing that everywhere since you mentioned it. Now you're hearing it, dude. I'm hearing it everywhere. My uh, uh, housemates are watching it. Uh, my partner's watching it with her mom. Uh, everyone's buddy watching this show. Like, <laughs> Get on board, bro. Drink the Kool-Aid. I'm, Come I'm on, resisting. Man. <laughs> so, but this is that there's so many fun, anything can be the basis for a conversation. Okay. Like uh, and just and keep it out of, you know, the quarantine, this, that we're in some sort of apocalyptic experience, like, like treat this as an opportunity to have fun, engaging, creative conversations, uh, with your, with your partner. I think the more you're learning and the more you're doing, the more this question will take care of itself. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't agree with you more, my friend. All right. So other questions, y'all, what do we got? What do we got? I don't really understand. Tilly, Tilly, our, uh, our, our great, our great life coach here says what to do when a girl and a boy are kind of in a, I'm cooler competition situation. Okay. So you mean within relationship, the two of you are sort of like trying to one up each other. Is that sort of what you're, what you're, uh, expressing there, Tilly? Yeah, it almost sounds like a, I'm trying to prove my value by holding back. He's trying to prove his value by holding back, which actually mm. comes because you're both scared. Mm. Totally, totally. So playing playing that sort of like aloof sort of delays in texting. I, I don't like... want to be the one who, like, I want to have the power. So I'm going to use holding back to have a little bit more cooler coolness and have a bit more power in the situation so that you are chasing me more than I'm chasing you. And if you are chasing me more than I'm chasing you, it means if one of us is going to get rejected, it's likely to be you. So it's a, it's actually in a, a rejection aversion game, exactly. which is the opposite of what I coach. I coach a rejection prone game, which means that when you show up authentically, Mm -hmm. And you say, hey, look, here's, you know, I'm just going to show up as myself. If this is, here's my neck. Uh, yeah, you do yeah. Well with it. Um, You're just showing cool up is, as yourself. Yeah, you, you might get rejected, but you will get rejected only by the wrong people and the right men will want to go deeper and say, oh, here's my neck too. Let's be more vulnerable together. 
and you go deeper into vulnerability and connection as opposed to higher into coolness and invulnerability. Yeah, yeah. And you're leading the way, right? You're leading with vulnerability and setting the stage for him to respond with vulnerability. And, and you are, and I talk about this in a lot of my lives, right? You're setting the tone. You're the conductor. You're the one creating that 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 that, that dynamic in the relationship. So if he's trying to be cool and he's pulling away, switch it up on him, be vulnerable, be real, be direct. And see how he responds, you know. And if he refuses to meet you there, then great. Sweet. You've got a you've got a great you know indicator that maybe he's not ready to be in the kind of relationship that you want. But don't play that game with him. It's never going to lead you to the sort of relationship uh, yeah. that you want. <laughs> Audrey says, "I used to open up to guys with emotional mush via text, and looking back, it was cringeworthy. It never worked. Nice work, Audrey. Audrey, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Learned your lesson." Uh, not the time. And he'll, and he'll he'll appreciate it a lot more if you're doing it when he's looking oh, into your yeah. eyes. Hell yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's when we turn to Jell-O. <laughs> uh, some, of, some of the conversation starter texts or yeah. best texts that I've got. Actually, one of them was the recovery text that I sent you, that I told you guys about before, which was she sent me a text of her of my text, a screenshot of my text, and then asked how to respond. It was a text that was actually intended for a friend of hers and then covered it and made her ground back and then some by going, oh, God, sending the guy I like or the guy I'm dating a text asking what to text the guy I like slash the guy I'm dating and the embarrassed emoji. And yes. we'll drop it. Worked like a charm. <laughs> uh, I had uh, one of the classics is if you're kind of dating each other and this is for after you've slept together, but you're getting to know each other, you're still in that phase. She just sent, in fact, I'll, I'll copy and paste it because uh, I wrote this one down before. This is a nice one. No emojis in this one. Or can I, how do I chat? I can't chat. Where's my chat? It's not letting me chat. Can I, am I not allowed to chat? Am I yeah, the only I'll, one in this? Tell it to me and I'll post it. Okay, I'll uh, I'll put it on the private one. There we go. Okay, cool. And if you click the tab, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so comments. How do I even get up to the private tab? <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> Basically, it was. I got it. Uh, you got it. Yeah, I'm po posting it now. It. Boom. All right. So it's this a is a cute one. <laughs> uh, it's just, and again, it's about. There's a little bit of. Hi, I need Suggles Teleport here. Okay, thanks. See you soon. She didn't <laughs> wait for the answer because there's that little bit of arrogance in the second half of it. It's just assumptive and it's just a really nice, I'm wanted. She's thinking about me. Uh, you know, this this is usually sent. In fact, this is almost always sent in a time where you can't actually do it. Like it's either too late at night or it's whatever. You're too far away. Logistics don't work. It's a perfect text for that spot. Yeah, a similar version in the 12 text guide that I've put up. Uh, Get out of the there, was, <laughs> there was a similar one, which was, hi, I'd like attention, please. I want attention. And it was yeah. in all caps. The whole thing was done in caps. <laughs> um, I actually think that's a lot better of a text, especially if you've got that friendship going, because it actually communicates a lot of confidence about your needs and your value and because it's so needy ironically it's not needy at all right only someone who's yeah. truly confident in the fact that they are not needy could send an all capitalized text that says hi i need attention yeah hi i need attention hi i need attention please give it to me <laughs> that's a really cool text yeah and yeah give me attention the it comes from a core of non-neediness mm, yeah I love it. what do you, what do you think about the hey stranger as a way of kicking uh, kicking things off or initiating. I Where don't do you fall like on it. Hey Stranger? You don't like I, Hey Stranger? I, uh, <laughs> it's just yeah. a random prod. Like, what am I going to respond to that? Hey, you, you just want attention. Like, but you're not really fully owning it. You're just like, hey, stranger. You're like expecting me to kind of come up with something. Yeah, and it can be sort of a guilt, like a little passive aggressive jab if that person used to text, if, if it's been a little while since you've heard from that true. person or whatever. True. That so is very it true. 100% be like one of those, like, hey, stranger. So, yeah, like where you're trying to guilt him a little bit for being 
a little uh, a little while since you've since you've heard from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is one, so this is a more of a relationship one, but you can adapt it for dating, which uh, this is one a, a partner sent me. So I'll send it to Matt in the background. Yeah. Um, so again, that's for a partner. So it goes <laughs> sexual, but you don't have to put the sexual end on it. And you uh, can just say, oh my God, the dubious guy was hitting, hitting on me today. Uh, and then give him some kind of compliment about him. Right, yeah. so let's say you just started dating him or you've just started, like you've been on a couple of dates and you things are going really well, you haven't slept together. Um, something as simple as, oh my God, the dubious guy was hitting on me today. Uh, nothing on our conversation about cats, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to finish it sexually. You can finish it any way you like. Just give him a compliment and it works because he's like, yeah, I'm a standard. Yeah, I am. You know, and it's also subtly, do you see the subtlety of, I have people hitting on me. I'm pretty like it makes him oh, yeah. too. It's a it's definitely a confidence thing. It's a confidence thing too. That and, and guys love like I honestly like when I'm dating somebody and I see another guy trying to hit on like my girlfriend, I kind of like it. I gotta say, I like I I I, it. isn't it fun? To, like, I think it's the guy thing like, <laughs> she's like, uh had a partner a while back. And um, she had an ex that was still like trying to get her. And she's like, yeah, this guy, I won't say his name. We'll call him Tim. Uh, Tim professed his love today. (laughs) I was like, yeah, he did. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. He's a a, a wise man right here. Whoever Your ex, whoever was chasing you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we want to be with a woman that we know is wanted by other men. Like that's a, it's a value add for us. And it's a nice little ego you know, boost for us too. So <laughs> um, anytime. A couple other simple conversation starters, something like you just popped into my head. So I thought I'd say, hi, hi. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I like the, I, I use that. I like the, you just popped into my head. I think that's a great, because men love that. Like we love feeling like you're thinking about us. We love uh, knowing that you, that we're in your head, that we're in your experience in some way, it's very attractive. Right. And, and we don't know, don't assume that we know ever that you're thinking about us, that you're attracted to us, that you're turned on thinking about us, anything like that. Like, let us know when we get a window into, you know, within you in some way, it's really meaningful. It means a lot to us. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, Mm -hmm. What else? Like I say, I always put an X on the end of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I've got a question. Yeah. So if you just started seeing each other before COVID, how often should you text video chat uh, knowing that you won't see each other for a while? Okay. So pacing, pacing of text and video communication during the quarantine. That's an interesting topic. What do you got to say on that one, Mr. I- I, I like what you said yesterday, which is you've got to find your own pacing with a certain guy. Mm-hmm. Um, it should, it's the same, I think exactly the same you do with a, with a friend, like a new friend that you made before quarantine or a friend even that you've known like a little bit longer. You know, it's just, you have some friends that you contact a lot. You have some friends that you don't contact as much. So you just kind of find this balance with this person. And if your ba- if their balance seems a little lower than yours, then give them the green light, you know, kind of do the subtle but not subtle hints that we gave before and see if the person wants to step up because the men will usually take the physical lead. So if he gets the hint and he likes you, he'll be like, oh, cool. I I have a green light to call her more or text her more. Uh, That's, yeah, that's really all I could add to that. Matt. Yeah, I, and I, I agree with you 100%. You know, I mean, really, like, it's it's it's, it's going to be very subjective. It's going to be very tied to that person, what dynamic they have together. You guys already have broken the intimacy barrier in that you were dating before the pandemic, right? At least a little bit. So figure out how much is he, how much does he like to text? How, how much is he comfortable with? Maybe he's a daily chatter. Maybe he's just a check-in once a day or a couple times a day. You just, you don't want to burn a guy out. That's the thing. Like don't try to push a guy to communicate more or text more often uh, than, than he's into or else you're going to wear him out and it might cause him to start uh, pulling away. 
And obviously that isn't, yeah. we want, we want to, we want our relationships to survive our new relationships, relationships to survive this quarantine. So we can actually get to know them again in the after times once we <laughs> emerge from this. A uh, little favorite text that these are from the 12 text guide as well. So you can download that from the description. Uh, yeah. I one, uh, I'm putting it up right is, now. Like, All right. Weird, funny Here's compliment. It. I like, I like this one a lot. That's that's one from the guy. So <laughs> he thinks he's getting this massive. It reads like a giant compliment, but it's super subtle that it's not. <laughs> that's a, a, a fave of mine. Yeah, I, I I like it. It's got like the autofill. It's got the autofill in, and then be like, oh, sorry, my 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 software, my texting software didn't fill in the. <laughs> in the what? Oh, the, yeah. It's like an email autofill right there. Right? <laughs> Um, yeah, and you, yeah, you can use that. It's just a fun little conversation starter. Um, anything that's kind of, that's creates a bit of polarity as well, which is you get to be the emotional kind of character in the journey. I'll, I'll post one here. Uh, again, this is just an example of a random text you can send to get a chuckle. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. Yeah, so this one, this is a good one. Boom. Just ended up in an internet black hole looking at pictures of, just pick whatever, pandolins. Right. Tigers. Strongly considering... <laughs> it's always, <laughs> the answer is always tigers, Mark. Come on now. <laughs> it's not always tigers. Strongly considering it's off one. I promise to pet it as long as you fan house it and pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just, and you see how the simple little connotation is like, you're going to be the girl in the situation. You're going to like look after the pretty animal. He's going to pay all the bills and you're just kind of in your emotions. Yeah. That's, that's like a fun and it gives the guy a good vibe. So stuff like this, if you want more text like this, get the free guide from the description. 12 texts to make him yours. There's some meme ones. There's some cheeky ones. <laughs> there. Messaging magic. You can learn about how to get the bigger guide as well. Uh, questions. Yes, we got a great question here from M. I've been texting for four months simply because of logistics. We can't be together yet. That's going to change soon. But we, we've we established that we are into each other. I told we will know more when we meet. So, so M, have you met up with him at all? Have you, or is this somebody that maybe you've met online uh, prior and, and you're just in the process of getting to know him? And, you know, let us know what your what your question is. Uh, around that because we would love to support you put your questions y'all in the in the comments and we're happy to answer any questions you have about how to text during covid during the pandemic in quarantine how to make things fun during quarantine uh that's what we are all about all right what it being bowman what if he wants to wait and until quarantine to meet in person but stops messaging over social media i don't want to push him and ask for his number he doesn't seem like much of a texter to begin with okay so it sounds like what she's saying is he's cut her off like he's basically said i want to meet up but until then i don't want to i don't want to maintain connect i mean i don't want to maintain have you have you let him know that you want to uh that you want to keep talking to him during quarantine and he's basically said he doesn't want to do that or have things just sort of faded off uh, being Bowman. That's an, that's an important thing to, to look at, but what are your thoughts on that? If, if, you know, uh, Mark, I mean, what do you, what do you think? I, I, I get the sense of very, I'll be totally honest. I get Please. a sense of very, very low interest levels from him. Yeah. He might, he might meet up after quarantine, which is kind of like, yeah, maybe I'll have a date, you know, in four months. Yeah. But, you know, you're not going to pause your life for a maybe date in four months. Mm -mm. No, put a pin, put a pin in it, pull back and let him come back to you. Truly is the way to, the way to manage that. I would say, uh, yeah. yeah. Yasmin Pyle. That's always it. That's always a good one. Do, do you see how the sly emoji really turns it sexual? So sec it's so sexual. It's just short of purple horny <laughs> emoji. It's just short of the eggplant. Just short of the eggplant just and the water. water. <laughs> the old eggplant water combo. That's the 
That's the classic. <laughs> nice. Well, that's that's what I've got for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I love it, man. Those are those are fantastic, y'all. And so so guys, so this is the thing, you know, like texting is has a very important uh, has a very important role in in dating, especially now when we're all getting to know each other remotely and we're all video chatting and we're all uh doing this over these apps and in these different you know remote environments but like we got to be really intentional in the way that we use it because it sounds like what you're saying mark is that it's much easier for us to mess up a connection with a man than it is to deepen a connection with a man over text is that pretty much yeah, yeah basically the, yeah. Text, you have a lot to lose and little to gain but the gain that you can make allow you to continue on the road to more personal connection and and that's extremely important it's like the login to your phone you still need it to access your phone every time and if you don't have it you often can't even get into the phone but it is a means to an end not an end unto itself i love it man i love it and and thanks so much for for coming by mark this has been so fun uh it's been a, it's been a blast having you on you're my first ever live guest so <laughs> my pleasure thank you for having me on here i really appreciate it don't forget yeah. Don't forget, uh, you can download 12 texts to make him yours. Totally free on the description below. A uh, question here from Fox. Yeah. Uh, Fox well. Parader. Okay. So Fox Parader says, what if the guy wants daily communication and I am not used to that? I tend to like my space and want to miss him, but I don't want him to lean back too much to where I miss hearing from him. Okay, so that's a that's a juicy question. I like, I like the question here. Yeah, um, Fox, if you're a client, what I'd be doing is I'd be saying, "What's your longer term vision for your relationship life?" Mm. Mm. So I'd be building that, and I'd be checking in with you. Well, what is the level of connection? I had to do this with a, a client recently, and she's been single for a long time which I thought was odd when she first came to me. She's a lovely, attractive young woman with lots going for her in mm. her early 30s. And you've been single for 10 years, okay. Uh, and for her, we took a dive into what, how does, and she's very extroverted too. So it's, she's, not, wow. she's not meeting people, extremely extroverted. Mm. It's like, okay, how have you been single for quite a decent time? And when we checked in, we noticed that she was quite subtly, um, dismissing relationships and guys on a romantic basis. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite unusual, but I had mm. to ask her, well, what, cause she had a similar complaint. She's like, Oh, these guys want to like text me most days. Is that weird? Like, am I weird? And, and had genuine uncertainty around it. So mm. we went forward to, okay, well, where do you want? Like, what do you want? You know, what's the relationship that you want? Do you just want like uh, a relationship we had a couple of times a week? And, and when we got really clear on that, we found that actually she did want to build a relationship where they were talking, connected every day. Mm. Um, and because of that, we had to get her into the discomfort of doing that. It, mm. it was basically an emotional intimacy fear for her. So I can't speak if it's the same for you, but I will say that if you're if that's the type of relationship you want, where you're talking, where you're talking a lot, you know, eventually you're connecting with someone regularly. Um, then for you, it could be an emotional intimacy challenge, unavailability thing on your part. And you're actually going to have to dive into the discomfort of talking and connecting with people every day and understanding that you're still safe in your independence doing that. Exactly, exactly, Fox. And I, I love that, Mark. And I think that's a really powerful thing for you to look at, Fox Parader, is to really look at the, the dynamics of different attachment styles and maybe do an attachment style test or to see where you fall on that, on that, on that spectrum. And, and really like, look at, you know, like, is what this man is asking for, for, is it, is it unreasonable? Or is it something that, you know, is pretty much within the normal spectrum of just wanting to have connected uh, communication with you in relationship, right? Because I mean, it's, it's kind of like, I know a lot of women out there, uh, really would be envious that you have a man in your life that like wants to communicate with you on a, on a regular basis. And every day, like a lot of women are fighting to get that from, from a guy, you know? So you've got a guy I'm, that's demonstrating. I'd be curious and maybe don't 
put it in the chat, but I'd be curious if I was working with you, if you had a, a parent or some situation growing up where your independence wasn't respected, you had someone in your space all the time, you had someone who just didn't respect your boundaries mm. and your natural thing is to dial back a lot and create fully establish those boundaries. Your, your challenge, if that's the case, will be to find your independence when you are in emotional intimacy. Have mm. those two coexist. Yeah, you can have them both. And I mean, the concept, the dependency paradox is a really powerful concept. If you've never researched that, I invite you to look at it, that we can actually be more independent, more strong, risk-taking, independent uh, individuals when we have the stable base of a secure relationship underneath us. So a relationship fundamentally does not rob you of your independence unless it is codependent, right? A yeah. healthy relationship is a partnership where two independent people seek to elevate each other. It's not about, you know, completing the other person because they're lacking something or robbing them of some independent aspect of their life. So reframing the way you see and understand relationship will really, I think, be powerful for you there. Nice, Thanks folks. Good question. Yeah. Uh, Shiva says how to do an attachment style test. They're, they're pretty straightforward. If you literally just Google it, mm -hmm. uh, I sent a couple out to clients yesterday. There's a few around. It's like $8, $10, uh, and you'll get some really valuable information from it. Absolutely. And and for those of you who haven't, most of you probably already have, but I'm uh, I'm starting my beta launch of my of my course, Mastery of Connection. Uh, you can sign up for free at masteryofconnection.com. And we do a whole series of lessons uh, on attachment style and the different dynamics between different attachment styles in that. So uh, there's links to that all over my YouTube channel and you can check that out, but it's at masteryconnection.com. You can check that out. So yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in, in learning that stuff and uh, knowing it here. So a uh, question from Junie, Junie Conrardi. Should I be okay, be calm and respond in the way to ease the situation to heavy, emotional, aggressive, attacking texts? I have literally been doing that. I mean, the other person texted me on the way includes all the, all the tips you said not to text, but I've been trying to manage and handle it. Hmm. Yeah, something, something's gone awry there, especially mm -hmm. if it's texts, use plural, which means that when bad stuff happens, especially if you've gotten to know someone, it's very rare that that thing suddenly is like, we're going great, things are wonderful, um, everything was perfect, and then like, bam, he cheats, or bam, he ghosts. Um, mm -hmm. There's usually been, even if you're not aware of it, somewhat of a build-up to that. So if you're in the case of angry, aggressive text, then there has to have been a buildup from, from both ends. So Junie, I'd be curious to know, and I'd be challenging you, okay, when was the very first text that wasn't chill, chatty, or cheerful? Because that's the point you, you shut it down and say, hey, just call me if you want to talk about this. Uh, and, yeah. and you might have to do it from your end, but if you try to do it with text, it really never works. Like you can't, I'm trying to think of a metaphor for this. It's like trying to, you, you know, uh, what's a good metaphor? I can't even think of one, but you basically, you're not going to solve the problem with more of the problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, fighting a house fire with like a, I don't know, some more fire, right? Gasoline. I think it can work with <laughs> gasoline. Yeah, it's, it's not going to work no matter how you artfully do it. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely just shut it down. The only thing you can, the only, I think Mark Manson has a saying, which is the only way to win a power game is to not play. Mm. And you've got to apply this. The only way to win a di deep diving texting exchange is to not be in it. Yeah. That, that's it. That's really the only yeah. answer. Don't mirror. Yeah, exactly. I, I love that, Mark. And don't do this. Don't mirror back. Don't mirror back whatever this person is throwing at you. A lot of times they're doing that because they want to. They want, they want you to mirror that back to them and get into some sort of escalating and validation of their own feelings or whatever's coming up. And the greatest way for you to de-escalate and neutralize how they're feeling is to just, I say, lead with love and respond with compassion. Lead with love and respond with compassion. I mean, it, it just take whatever they're giving you and just respond compassionately. I'm sorry you feel that way, you know? Like, I, I, hope, I hope that you feel better. Uh, you know, let me know how I can support you. Like, don't, don't give them. And if they're being abusive to you, you know, let them know that you're not, you're not interested. That's not an alignment with the kind of relationship I want in my life. 
So, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and take a step back until you're willing or able to, you know, treat me in the manner that I, that I know that I'm worthy of. You see what I'm saying? Like always grounded in your value with all of these, uh, all these, all these responses and all these things. So very, very, uh, important, you know? So, uh, I want to end, I want to do this again. All right. All right, Mark. Let the dogs out on, <laughs> let the dogs, let the dogs out on this one, Mark. Let's get weird. Oh, right. I love this. Let's get Subtle weird. Hints. So you can do this. Don't, don't write the full thing out with every detail. In fact, I had some of the, I thought you might ask this question. So I had some of these in reserve. Uh, you don't want to go straight to the like hyper dirty. If you really want to build the guy up, you do it subtly, right? And you do it with, with imagination. I've got a whole sexting guide actually on this, which um, if you download the texting guide, you can figure out that there'll be links from there. But texts like, I've got a few here for us. Hold on. Uh, here's some good ones. Texts like, Morning, sexy. I woke up thinking about you with the sly emoji. Mm. Uh, I can't stop thinking about the things you did to me last week with the hard eyes emoji. All right? The tingles I get when you touch me, I can't even. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Uh, when you come over later, I want you to do, or well, next time you come over, since we're in quarantine, next time you come over, I want you to do whatever you want to me. Don't ask. Dot, dot. Mm. You know, I wish you were here to feel what you do to me. And then the waterfall emoji. <laughs> heaps of different ones heaps of different yeah. stuff you can do with this i love it uh, every guy loves to see every guy loves to see the waterfall emoji every guy loves to see that. <laughs> it's like the hallelujah emoji it's like you send yes. you send that and it, it's also a lot i'm not a fan of of nudes like i've never been um it's kind of a low denominator because it's something that any woman can do and get a reaction mm -hmm. whereas if you write a really good text you set yourself apart and you can be just as sexual more alluring and put yourself a cut above other women who are just doing the simple route which is i'll just send a nude um, yeah so i'm a big fan of like all the hints all the words all the teasing but i would stay away from the photos would be my advice Exactly. Or if you're going to do a photo, make it not overtly sexual, but highly suggestive and really prime the pump. I'm actually, it's so funny. I just did an outline for a video that I'm going to do on this, like how to turn him on without touching him. Like it's like my next video that I'm going to nice. put out. <laughs> nice. And like, just imagine a guy as a, as a guy, right? We get a, we get a text that says thinking about you dot, dot, dot. And then it's like a little five second video of you like chewing on the end of your of your pen, like nibbling on the end of your pen suggestively, sort of like looking at the camera. Yeah. Forget it. I mean, come on, Mark. You know that would get your motor running. That is very cool. I like that. <laughs> like a yeah, little anything that's just a little different, a little suggestive, a little different will mm -hmm. stand out huge. Yeah. Playing with the hem of your skirt, right? Just being like getting a little, getting a little, you know fidgety here. Maybe you want to come over later and help me with that, you know, and just a little thing of like you clutching the hem of your skirt, a little picture, a little video, forget about it. I'm going to be into it. that. Yeah. So just yeah. there's so many ways to sort of just dance and to prime, build that sexual tension throughout the day. So then it just explodes in all manners, uh, later on that, uh, that evening. So be creative yeah. though, be multimedia with that and you'll you'll see it'll there's a lot more fun to be had if you start throwing like a 50 shades of gray meme in there you know something like that i mean you can do some you can get really creative with uh especially with friends with benefits where you're not like trying to you know be a certain way you know it can be a lot more fun yeah yeah so i'll get <laughs> what if a man sends you a nude pic what is the best reaction <laughs> Look, I'll just answer this by saying Google best response to unsolicited dick pic and you'll get a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> there you go. Okay. That's, uh, that's a good, that's a good one. That's a, that's a, that's a quality response to, to, to end on Mark, man. Thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out with us. This has been super fun. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me on the channel. Don't forget your free download. There's some more text examples you can have a play with in the description as well. And yeah, it's been been lots of fun. I love your work. I love what you do, brother. Your program's going really well. So uh, keep kicking butt. 
Thank you, bro. So appreciate that. And for everybody who's been watching, I hope you I hope you got some value out of this. Check out Mark's guide. Uh, there's so much amazing value in that. And uh, we'll see you on the next live. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye, y'all. See ya.